I'm about to do something very, very risky. I'm about to put a picture on the internet. No, it's not of me naked. You can breathe easy. It's a picture of me soldering. And there's nothing people like more on the internet than picking apart other people's soldering. So uh, if you actually have something constructive to say about my soldering, I'm always, always willing to learn and to uh, to get better. But if all you want to do is do a drive-by, oh, it's too cold, oh, it's a bad solder joint, I don't know, just, just don't bother. Okay, so here's the tip I'm going to give you. I'm going to tell you how to eye solder a great big joint like a 12 gauge or a 14 gauge uh, main power lead or the big cluster of ESC leads that you get on the RROSD since it just has one pad each for minus and positive, not, uh, not separate pads per ESC. And the problem is that if you put enough heat into one of these great big joints to really flow it to the level that you really need to to get a good solder joint, it can stay wet long enough that the joint kind of wires move stuff doesn't stay in place it can be really hard to get all of that right the very first time you solder so what i do is this the first thing i do is of course i tin the pads and i tin the wires soldering 101 and then i give the joint just enough heat to stick the wire to the pad just barely stick it now what you saw me do there that is not a good solder joint if you solder like that you got problems okay there was not nearly enough heat to fully flow all of the solder we do not have a good fillet of solder a good sort of a joint of solder between the wire and the pad it is just barely stuck on there i didn't actually like the way this was sitting so i'm going to hit it with the heat again and i'm kind of shuffle it a little bit till it sits better more sort of centered on the pad and it's sitting how i like it oh. Now what happened there was I hit the wire with the heat to try and make it stick to the pad, but it had soaked up enough heat because I've been hitting it with the iron a bunch of times that the solder stayed wet longer than I expected it to. And when I moved the wire, moved my hand away, the wire just came right off the pad. So that's kind of the kind of thing that this technique is designed to deal with, but you got to get it at least stuck first. Now that was actually a decent, half decent at least, solder joint. Did you see the solder flow down off the wire and onto the pad and sort of fill all the gaps and cracks? That's really what you want to be looking for. Now I don't call that done. I'm not confident about that yet. I might not even have noticed that it happened while I soldering, but that's the minimum I would look for for a, a good and decent solder joint is that sort of complete flowing of solder down into the joint. Now the same thing with the negative wire. And again, I'm, I'm gonna give it just enough heat that it sticks. Uh, I'm not trying to make a complete and wonderful joint here. Now I'm gonna come in with a tool. I like to use a small flathead screwdriver. It's not ideal to use metal, but that's because it pulls heat out of the joint, but that's what I use. I'm gonna add just a little dab of solder to the top here. And I just, I don't wanna try and flow it. I just wanna have a little extra solder in flux. And then while holding it with the tool, I'm gonna hit the joint with a good amount of heat and really make sure I completely flow the whole thing, making sure to make contact with the pad and the wire. And you can really see it on this one. Watch how it flows. You can really see the whole thing flowing, all the solder on the wire turning to, to, to liquid and flowing down and making a good contact, a good complete fillet up against the pad. And that's what I like to do with this kind of joint is I give it just enough heat to get it stuck. And then I guess you could call it a reflow. I hold it down in place with a tool and then I reflow it with a good amount of heat to make it really flow. And, and there's usually enough flux left in the joint that it still is a good, good joint. This is especially useful on those big joints where you've got like four ESC wires all coming to the same pad. You solder one down and if you give it enough heat to get it stuck, the other one pops off. It's a real pain. So just give them enough heat to stick one, two, three, four at a time right next to each other and then hold them down with something and really give them the beans with the heat. Maybe even dab a little more solder on top before you do it so you got extra solder to flow down into the joint and really make it good. That's my tip for doing this kind of big solder joints. Hope it was helpful. Happy flying.